Hi there, we've chatted about the men's 800 meters in uh, the Rio Olympic Games this year with David Rudisha cruising through very comfortably to the gold medal. But let's for a moment talk the women's 800 meters. And a little bit later on today, you'll be seeing the heats for the women's 800 meters. And you may notice something slightly unusual about a number of the athletes. Coach Abel. And one athlete in particular, but I'll get to that in a moment. There's an expert on athlete genetics that has made the prediction as far as the 800 meter final for uh, the Rio to, uh, Olympic Games is concerned. And that prediction is that four out of the eight athletes that will make the final in Rio this year will be intersex athletes. In other words, uh, on a um, gender level, there will be a combination of both male and female, which is an important factor to, take care, to, to bear in mind. And the prediction goes further to say that you can be sure that all three athletes that make it onto the podium for the women's 800 will be intersex athletes, and none athlete, no athlete, athlete stands out more clearly in that regard than Caster Semenya of South Africa. What we know about Caster Semenya of South Africa, well, well, the one thing that we do know about Caster Semenya is she has no ovaries, she has no womb. But from an um, athlete gender point of view, her gender is still classified as female and therefore she gets to race with the women. And in addition to that, the Court for Arbitration of Sport has issued a ruling which the IWAF has to maintain, and that is for all intersex athletes. The previous ruling was if, it, if you were an intersex athlete, you had to take beta blockers to block the amount of testosterone that your body is producing and bring it down to a certain numerical level. Now what happens is that that ruling has been reversed because um, that will mean be forcing athletes onto what could potentially be unhealthy hormonal replacement therapy practices and we don't want to be doing anything that will be potentially detrimental to the athlete's health. So what we know that the um, athletes now no longer need to take the beta blockers and their testosterone levels can readjust up to what that athlete's personal normal testosterone level would be. And um, we know that especially for athletes like Castor and the other intersex athletes, that's at a testosterone level three, four, five, six times higher than the other women athletes that will be that they'll be running against. So from that perspective, we know that they'll be at a super elevated testosterone level. But, of course, we know that testosterone levels have got absolutely nothing to do with athletic performance. And what's more, that with an athlete that now hasn't got any type of numerical cap on the type of, on the, on the testosterone level, there's absolutely no reason why that, that athlete would supplement with any additional testosterone by, by way of microdosing because these things simply don't work. We know that for a fact. And when it comes to uh, endurance sports, and there is a fair amount of endurance in 800 meters, nobody would ever be on EPO either because that doesn't work either. And what's more, EPO can be detected in a, in a urine test just like that. We know that for a fact too. But anyway. The half-life of EPO is four hours. So you can back it out from there and figure out when you're in trouble. Will he pass every test because he does not take EPO? Yes, he will. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. Post any comments, questions, criticisms you have in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and share this video. And Lastly, remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and stay carved up for the win. I'll see you next time. Cheers.